Okay, I thought I'd show you how I work in Masterpiece VR. I decided to go ahead and record it and edit it. Somebody was interested in my trains. So I'll show you one way to do a train. Okay, so I like to set up my guides out here where I can still reach them. And they're well outside the workspace. Let's go sculpt. Make sure your resolution's high. Well, if you want it high, show them over its model and don't worry about it. Now, I've got my space right here in front of me, so I can take this and I can create a plane. And I wish I could see the box a little better here. Of course, if I change my spaces, I could. Uh, and let's do that. A little bit darker than I usually do. There we go. Okay. Now let's make a plane. That's like right. Oh, you know what? I'm going to make it right upright. Make it just about the size of the cube. So you can do use as much space as you want to. Now take. Oh. You want it facing, you want it to be the ground. So however you want your ground oriented. I mean, you might have a hill or whatever. So you can do that. But I want this one to be fairly flat. Doesn't really matter too much. Now, you can take your workspace and turn it down. Now, keep in mind, we're looking top down here. And straighten it up a little bit here, actually. Okay, that's good. Now, let's go sculpt tools, and notice I've got a cube selected, and I've got a nice brown color selected here. And yes, a cube. Okay, make sure it's stuck to the cube. Get that, so you get that silhouette. Make sure it's stuck to that plane. You get that silhouette around the cube there, it appears, and it highlights the cube when you're getting close to it. See? So, just start and make whatever kind of random sort of shape you'd like to have for the outline and I find for myself I'm better off I just don't even think about it and just make some weird shapes here and it usually comes out better um, and then I usually just go ahead and make it a little bigger going here in the middle And, whoops, wasn't stuck to the plane. You can actually stick to the plane and still turn your cube like this. Oh, actually, I'm not stuck to the plane. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. It doesn't matter uh, for what I'm going to do. So, now, I think I'm essentially done with that plane. Uh, if you want something, you know, is a little sub island out here or something you can put one out here that's parallel to it oh let's just make it go right to the edge there so we know where the edge of the space is and maybe couple of happy islands in here. Alright, now I'm done with that plane. I can grab the plane and you know what it's going to do. I got a trash can here. Just pop it in there and the plane's gone. Yeah, bulge is a really cool tool. Watch what happens here. Oh, and I like to turn the strength way up. I'm just sort of free-forming with this. Still with the cube shape. And the reason is it's starting to turn into a little bit more like a geology already. Right? 
And then, I'll tell you, go ahead and get your sear, do a little more bulging, and if you want to do some weird stuff, you can go on the bottom and you can take your pyramid, uh, which way is my pyramid, there it is. Let it crawl all the way down to it. And it's okay to keep it moving, and it's okay if you get some different colors showing up there. This tool can do that because I think what's going on, it's taking like colors from the middle, maybe. I'm not sure. I don't know why it would change colors. Or maybe I'm. Maybe it's because I'm bulging where the light's hitting. I don't know. I'm theorizing. And if you want, you know, what I really do is I usually just do like this. Take the sphere and go all around. Oops. I wind up erasing that guy soon. Uh, and then, yes, I do erase. One of my wishes is that you keep bulging infinitely, but there is a limit to how much it bulges. <laughs> and if you want to put some fun stuff there, it's fine too. But okay, take a race and then take either the cone or the pyramid. Cone works really well. It's easier. And I just take this and just go to get you some more jagged rock type. Oh, not that much. And it's, I'm bad about I'll hold my trigger down and keep going. Then when I undo it, I have to redo it all. So. And you're going after, you really want that angular sort of look in a few places, at least. And this would make it... Sometimes you get too jaggy with this. Hey, you see, it already kind of looks like a like an island, doesn't it? Now it gets brown. Now, something else you can do if you want some rocks. Come in here. Turn on your grid. Believe it or not, and I just put about four because I'm there again. How much do I take? Draw, take our medium rock color <laughs> or just pure black and paint it later. Uh, oh, you know what? For rocks, turn your strength all the way up. Oh, and this is a good place to use this bathing as well. Actually, very good place. And maybe just a little one over here. And here and here and then here. What happened to my gripper stopped working? 
probably had it occluded there or something. And it doesn't matter. And actually, the, the more you do it, the more... If you take it... Okay, watch this. It, that's a better way to do it, actually. That was the trick I was going to show you. Hold down your... That's not one. Okay. It's not hitting it. That's why. So, that's fine. Eh, second thought, you know what, that, well, I was doing it with the grid the other day, you know that, maybe it was on two. And while you're there, you can, if you shake it, shake your controller, and then put some smaller ones if you want. Okay, now, take that, and just take all that, and this is a really good brush, so turn your grid off. You want to slow variations, get those. I mean, if it looks too square like. If it looks too square like, man, it's like square, man. <laughs> See right there, it's too square. All right, now you may also want to come in here with this same thing and go. The point is we're getting some rock shapes from some non-rock shapes. And I know that was not very likely, but is a floating island very likely? <laughs> And then you can start going in there and go with your um, paint color and you can either desaturate or darken. Uh, and I'll like just come in and hit around, sort of around the edges there. Oh, it looks yeah. So the dark, or the, yeah, the dark parts on the bottom there more than on, up on the island. And they, but y'all may also want to hit your rocks. Especially where they run into the ground like that. And maybe even a lot. so dark. So I had it on dark. Uh, I usually like about 30%. Down around that. And then go back and hit any place you got a low spot. I like to hit it a little bit with the dark. And that's just going to help the overall impression of the 3D pop a little more from each angle. And we need some smoothing here, obviously. And 
maybe that rock's actually going down here, and that's what we're seeing. And now by hitting kind of the edge there, um, was it at 30%? I'm just kind of blending those two together. All right. Got some halfway percentable rocks. A little bit more coloring here. Okay, then you can just come in here, take some of this. too bright, but this is an alien world, right? So their grass is really bright. stuff. Watch this. Noise. Noise, noise. Any place I put the green. Let's see what we got set at. 50 and 50. Let's turn the strength down. Get this nice little bumpy effect. At fairly low polygon count, I think. Certainly easy to do. And, you know, make it bumpy on the dirt part there, too. So it's like rocks or whatever. Some places. Not every place. I like to leave some places flat, kind of, because then it looks it's kind of like it's a different stuff. And if you want to, you can hit these rocks. It's a different effect, though. See, it's, I don't necessarily like it for, but maybe for some of the rocks. Kind of makes them look more weathered, I guess. Oh, it says if I turn the texture all the way up. Oh, no, wait. Let's see.
see what's happening. It's awesome effects just for like for free. So anyway, you know, I wanted to share this little tip. These little tips. Uh, let me know if you guys like this. You know, I'd love to see subscribers, of course, and watch my videos and comment and share and all that stuff. But the main thing is about the artwork, right? So just enjoying the artwork, and I'm happy. Oops, and that should be. Oh, like black, black. Or at least if I do, I gotta break it up. Break it up on the high points. And you can also do splatter. This is nice, actually. Kind of match your texture. Or simulate texture. Even better. It's the same thing. You turn it way up. And get a lot of different nice stuff. So, check it out. It's turning into a place I want to go walk around in VR already. And then, of course, you could have trees, bushes. I'm not going to get into all that in this video. I just wanted to show these few tips, I think, for now. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to save. Let you guys see the weird save stuff I've got going here. And if you want to export while you're at it, I'm going to do a couple. I'm going to do, okay, yeah. first one's at 25%. Next one's 100%. Can take a bit. We're back. Eh, don't need STL. STL would be if you want to do a 3D printing. Um, Object is really a saves the colors and everything in one file. Well, FBX does too, as long as you have all selected. And FBX is good for uh, Unity, especially or games. Oh, and I see some hard hard lines there now that I'm looking at that. But oh well, I'll come back to that. Maybe I kind of like this one. Low floating island. All right. Thanks for watching.